So we got our intercepts. We have asymptotes. Uh oh. <clears throat> I don't think we counted crossing and bouncing yet. Oh, so there are no vertical asymptotes. All right. How about end behavior? Let's go and look at that. So you're looking at highest powers, so R of X. I'll rewrite here. X minus 12 over 4X squared plus X plus 1. So end behavior, you're going to throw out the minus 12 and every low power on the bottom. So this reduces to 1 over 4x, or you could write it as 1 fourth times 1 over x. All right, so what end behavior happens when you have a higher power of uh, x in the denominator? All right, we'll look back at the chart, which disappeared. Oh, man. Where were we looking? Everything disappeared. <laughs> we're floating in space. What was the when the higher power is in the bottom? Yeah, so hopefully it's in your notes. So cloud, and we have a horizontal asymptote, and this one was y equals zero. So another way to think about it, what happens to one over x when x is really big, and one over x gets really small? So this is going to go towards zero on both sides. Now we're going to take all this information and turn it into one graph. So we have our intercepts, which are no longer on my notes. What were the intercepts from your notes? I think 12, so those are x. And what about our, we had a y-intercept, I think? Zero, negative 12. So our end behavior, I'm going to use the orange highlighter here. We, that's not the orange highlighter. All right, well, they won't let me use the orange highlighter, so I'm just going to make dotted lines right here, and that's my horizontal asymptote, y equals zero. One note's got one big problem this morning. All right, so from here, we're gonna connect the two intercepts together. Now, it's not gonna be a perfectly straight line, so we'll fix that line later. I don't think they'll let me erase on here, but you guys might be able to erase was 12, uh, the x-intercept was at cross or bounce. So let's look at our original function. Where did the x-intercept come from? Numerator or denominator? Numerator. So x minus 12, that is appearing one time. So it's going to be a cross-intercept. So we're going to cross at 12. So we're going to cross the x-axis there. There's nothing else going to the right other than the horizontal asymptote, y equals 0. So I have to cross the x-axis, and then, oh, here's a lot more. All right, so we're going to cross the x-axis, and then the next thing we have to do is get very close to the horizontal line, y equals 0. So there's really only one way to do it, which is start to curve back downwards like this, and then approach that horizontal asymptote. So any questions about the crossing and then approaching that horizontal asymptote? So what else is going on in the function? We're going to graph all the negative x values now. So what happens when I move to the left? There's really no other thing going on over here other than the horizontal asymptote. There's no more x-intercepts or vertical asymptotes. So all we have to do is approach the ho horizontal asymptote like that. So 
So without actually using calculus, I can't figure out where the uh, actual minimum will be. It may not be right on the y-axis. The function may continue to go down and then approach like this. So without some more advanced mathematics, we can't really figure out all these details. But this will be our graph uh, for this function. So we'll graph one more before your uh, quiz today. So our numerator will be x minus 1, denominator x squared minus 9. Let's look for uh, vertical asymptotes first. So vertical asymptotes are when I would be divided by 0. So they are when 0 equals x squared minus 9. So you should get two solutions out of this. You could factor or you could uh, add 9 to both sides. I'm going to use factoring. So you can see x is 3 or negative 3 right there. And are these going to cross or bounce? They're going to cross. They're both going to cross. And x-intercepts. How do we find x-intercepts? I've only been doing this for a month. Make y equal to zero. Yep, make y equal to zero. So we're going to set our entire f of x equal to zero and figure out what makes this fraction zero. So the denominator never makes a fraction zero. It can make it undefined, but denominator ne never going to make it zero. Algebraically, you can multiply by the denominator. So you can see right away, x equals 1 is our x-intercept. So it appears 1, 0 as a point. And is this crossing or bouncing? It's bouncing. So it's not bouncing because 1 is odd. It's bouncing because the power is even. So you're always looking at the power. So let's find our y-intercept. That's usually the fastest to find. You take 0 and plug it in for the x. And we have 1 over negative 9, or negative 1 ninth. And last up, end behavior. So write the original f of x, and then we'll ju look just at the high powers. So we're looking for the highest power terms only. So I don't care about the minus 1. I also don't care about the minus 9. So I'm ignoring those. And we have x squared over x squared, which reduces right down to 1. So when things reduce to 1, this is going to be a horizontal line, except this horizontal line is y equals 1, not y equals 0. So when there's a tie, meaning the degree is the same, in this case 2 and 2, then it's going to be whatever the uh, ratio of coefficients. We don't usually write down 1 and 1, but we totally can write down those coefficients, so it's just a ratio of 1 over 1 is your horizontal asymptote. So let's go ahead and put all this on a graph now. So we had an x-intercept of 1. We had vertical asymptotes at 3 and negative 3. That's a good time for your highlighter. It 
make sure that I can read what your x values are for your asymptotes. And when I write my horizontal asymptote, I also need to label that one. So now I have my y equals 1 horizontal asymptote. And we are ready to graph. So my y intercept is negative 1 ninth. So I'll just estimate it to be right there, pretty close to the origin, just a little bit below. So I'll label it right down there. So between the two points that are on the graph already, there's really nothing going on in between them. So we can connect them together like normal. Now I have some choices to make. Do I cross or bounce on this x-intercept? You bounce. So I bounce. That's very important. So that means I'm going to bounce. And now I approach the vertical asymptote on the bottom side, not on the top side. So that's what determines us going downwards and not upwards. So now our vertical asymptote at 3. Is that a cross or bounce vertical asymptote? So that's a cross asymptote. So it's not going to come back from the bottom. That would be a bounce. It's going to approach the top on the other side. So they Odd or bounce means they don't match, or cross means they don't match. And the only other thing to do is I uh, draw the graph going to the right. I need to approach the horizontal line y equals 1. So it's just going to keep bending downwards and approaching that line right there. So any questions on the right part of the graph? So now we're going to move to the left. So sometimes people ask, well, why don't we ever have a bounce y-intercept? Why can't we come out like that? It wouldn't be a function. Very true. All right, so you'll never see a bounce y-intercept because you would double up on your uh, y values for a single x value. So we are going to draw the graph to the left of our y-intercept. Why would it be incorrect to approach the asymptote up there? Because we can't cross the horizontal asymptote. So I have that problem. Well, I can cross horizontal asymptotes. What would I have to get? You have to get another x-intercept. X-intercept. And we said there's only one of those. So I can't go back across the x-axis. So there's only one way to approach this asymptote, and that is on the bottom side. And now the other vertical asymptote, negative 3, that's also a cross. So we're going to approach on the opposite side or the top. And the last thing to do, connect this up with the horizontal asymptote. And there's our graph. So we got just enough time to look at a graph on Desmos. All right, so look at that. You should be mildly impressed. You did not use the clueless method. Or I didn't use the clueless method, at least. I don't think clueless method will come out with this graph so nicely. So you see the bounce uh, intercepts right there at uh, whatever we said, 1. And if you zoom out, really, it's better to zoom out further to see your horizontal vertical uh, uh, asymptotes because they look really like lines when you zoom out farther. You can really see the 
I mean, it's hard to see the actual x values, but you definitely see that there's two vertical asymptotes and one horizontal asymptote, for sure. You can, totally, you can see them up closer, but they're not so obvious. Once you've looked at enough graphs, you can definitely see them, though.